welcome students first let's see some problems related to orifices a tank has two identical orifices on one of its vertical sides the upper orifice is 3 meter below the water surface and lower one is 5 meter below the water surface if the value of cv for each orifice is 0 0.96 find the point of intersection of the two jets okay the question is given that height of the water from the first orifice is 3 meters that is upper orifice is 3 meters below the water surface it's given in the question see it's marked in the figure also and lower one is 5 meter below the water surface that is also marked in the figure if the value of coefficient of velocity cv for each orifice is 0 0.96 that is given here find the point of intersection of the two jets this we have seen before in the derivation that is the point p which is such a horizontal distance of x and vertical distance of y1 and y2 from the orifices okay we have seen this before so assume that let p is the point of intersection of the two jets coming from orifices 1 and 2 such that x is the horizontal distance of p y1 vertical distance of p from orifice 1 y2 vertical distance of p from orifice 2 y1 is equal to y2 plus 5 minus 3 that is 2 so y1 is equal to y2 plus 2 meters okay 5 minus 3 that is 2 meters is the distance between the two orifices so y1 is equal to y2 plus 2 that is distance from p to the upper orifice is distance from p to the lower orifice plus 2 meters okay so the value of cv obtained from the equation cv is equal to x divided by square root of 4 into y into h okay so cv1 that is coefficient of velocity for orifice 1 is x divided by square root of 4 into y1 into 3 which is h1 again coefficient of velocity for orifice 2 is x divided by 4 into y2 into h2 that is 4 into y2 into h2 is 5 here we don't know what is y1 and y2 as both the orifices are identical cv1 is equal to cv2 that is given in the question okay here we equate both the equations and we get 3 y1 is equal to 5 y2 so we also know that y1 is equal to y2 plus 2 so we substitute y1 is equal to y2 plus 2 in this equation we get 3 into y2 plus 2 is equal to 5 y2 finally we get y2 is equal to 3 so since y2 is 3 cv2 we know it is 0 0.96 hence we can obtain x from this equation since we know all the other quantities we get x as 7.436 meters now let's see the flow through large orifices we said before that if the head of the liquid is less than 5 times the depth of the orifice, the orifice is called a large orifice. In case of small orifice, the velocity in the entire cross section of the jet is considered to be constant. That is, velocity of all particles in the fluid jet from a small orifice is same. Discharge is calculated by the equation Q is equal to CD into A into square root of 2GH. This is the case of small orifices that is velocity in the jet is constant and Q is given by CD into A into square root of 2GH. But for a large orifice where head is less than 5 times the depth of the orifice, velocity is not constant over the cross section of the jet and hence q cannot be calculated using this equation so we shall derive a new equation that is consider a large rectangular orifice in one side of the tank discharging freely into the atmosphere 
under the constant head H. Okay, this is the tank. It has a supply of water here. So there is a constant H head H which can be maintained, and the uh, fluid is flowing freely out of the tank through the orifice, which is a large orifice. We are assuming a large rectangular orifice. Then we know that from the figure H1 is the height of liquid above the top edge of the orifice. You can see this is the top edge and this is the bottom edge of the orifice. This is the top edge of the orifice and this is the bottom edge of the orifice. Okay, top edge and bottom edge of the orifice. So, height of the liquid above the top edge is H1 and height of the liquid above the bottom edge is H2. B is the breadth of the orifice. Here they have shown the cross section of the orifice. So, B is the breadth of the orifice and B is the depth of the orifice. Okay, so B is equal to H2 minus H1. That you can see from the figure. B is equal to H2 minus B is this quantity right so H2 minus H1 will give you small d and Cd is the coefficient of discharge of the orifice consider an elementary horizontal strip of depth dh at a depth of h below the free surface of the liquid in the tank okay so at a depth h below the free surface this is the free surface of the what liquid in the tank right this is the free surface so at a depth of h below the free surface you have a strip which has a thickness of dh right it is here okay so area of that strip it is a rectangular strip as you seen from the figure so area of the rectangular strip is breadth in depth that is b into dh and theoretical velocity we know it is square root of 2gh so discharge through the elementary strip is given as dq which is cd into area into velocity okay so cd into b into dh into square root of 2gh that is cd b square root of 2gh dh so this is the discharge through the strip. Now by integrating this equation, we can find out the discharge through the whole orifice. Okay, we had a rectangular orifice. We considered a strip of fluid flowing. We considered the discharge through this strip. Now to get the discharge through this whole rectangle, we can integrate the strip. Such many strips make up this whole rectangle. So by integrating the discharge through the strip, we get the total discharge through the rectangular orifice. So the limits of integration will be H1 and H2. Okay. So Q, there is a total discharge through the orifice is equal to H1 to H2. Cd into B into square root of 2gh dh. So these terms are taken outside since they are constants and h1 to h2 square root of h into dh. So square root of h means h raised to 1 by 2. So h raised to 1 by 2 when integrated becomes h raised to 3 by 2 by 3 by 2. Limits applied h1 to h2. So it becomes 2 by 3 into cd into b into square root of 2g in brackets h2 raised to 3 by 2 minus h1 raised to 3 by 2 okay so let's see a problem a rectangular orifice 0.9 meter wide and 1.2 meter deep is discharging water from a vessel the top edge of the orifice is 0.6 meters below the water surface in the vessel Calculate the discharge through the orifice if CD is equal to 0.6 and percentage error if the orifice is treated as a small orifice. Okay, so let's see. 
Okay, so the given quantities are width of the orifice is equal to 0.9 meters, depth of the orifice is equal to 1.2 meters, top edge of the orifice is 0.6 meters below the water surface, that is H1 is equal to 0.6. Okay, H1 is equal to 0.6. So H2 is equal to H1 plus D. H2 is the distance between the bottom edge of the orifice and water surface. So bottom edge below the water surface is equal to distance between top edge and water surface and distance between the two orifices. So H1 plus D which is equal to 0.6 plus 1.2 which comes to 1.8 meters. CD is equal to 0.6. So the discharge Q is given by the equation for rectangular large rectangular orifices that is 2 by 3 into CD into B into square root of 2G into H2 raised to 3 by 2 minus H1 raised to 3 by 2. Here we know the quantities CD, B, then G, H2 and H1. So by direct substitution we get Q as 3.1097 meter cube per second. Okay. Again, in the question they have mentioned that what is the percentage error if the orifice is treated as a small orifice? So, let's find out the discharge for a small orifice. Q1 is equal to CD into A into square root of 2GH. So, CD is given 0.6. So A is 0.9 into 1.2. That is area of the orifice. So we have A and H can be H1 plus D by 2. Okay. That is in case of small orifices, we take the head from the center of the orifice. So hence H1 plus D by 2. So 0.6 plus 1.2 by 2 gives you 1.2 meters. So Q1 is calculated as 3.1442 meter cube per second. So percentage error is a difference between the discharge when it is considered as a small orifice and when it is considered as a large orifice. So Q1 minus Q by Q the percentage error comes to 1.109 percentage. Next, let's see the discharge through a fully submerged orifice. A fully submerged orifice is one in which the whole of the outlet side submerged under liquid so that it discharges a jet of liquid into the liquid of the same kind. That means, see in the figure you can see we have a tank here and we have an orifice on one of its sides and there is a jet of water going outside but the space where the jet of water is going outside that is also submerged under water okay or fluid so hence this orifice is called a fully submerged orifice okay and the liquid in both sides are same Okay, so this is the upstream side and this is the downstream side that you already know. Okay, so let's see the notations. H1 is the height of water above the top of the orifice on the upstream side. H2 is the height of water above the bottom of the orifice. So this is the top of the orifice and this is the bottom of the orifice. H is the difference in water level that is marked on the downstream side. Difference in water level between the upstream and downstream. B is the width of the orifice which can be seen only in the cross section. And CD is the coefficient of discharge. Height of water above the center of the orifice on the upstream side. So we know that this is the upstream side. Okay, and we have to find out this height. 
this line marks the center line of the orifice okay so the height is given by adding h1 plus h2 minus h1 by 2 so h2 minus h1 by 2 where h2 minus h1 is the depth of the orifice and that divided by 2 will give you half the depth of the orifice so h1 plus half depth of the orifice will give you this quantity that is depth of water surface above the center line of the orifice so this equation finally comes to h1 plus h2 by 2 now if we see the downstream side we have to find out the height of water above the center of the orifice on the downstream so height of water is here center of orifice is here so this distance we have to find out the easiest way sorry height of water on the downstream side is here the easiest way to find this height is to subtract this height and capital H okay this height we have already found out it is here which is h1 plus h2 by 2 so h1 plus h2 by 2 minus h will give you the height of water above the center on the downstream side okay again once more from the first equation we obtained the height of water above the center of the orifice on the upstream side by adding h1 and half depth of the orifice half depth of the orifice is obtained by first finding out that this difference between the h2 and h1 and dividing it by 2 so this is the half depth of the orifice which is added to h1 h1 is the height of water above the top so height of water above top plus half depth gave you the height of water above the center on the upstream side okay now let's apply Bernoulli's equation at sections 1 and 2 okay so here we know that since both the levels of section 1 and 2 are same z1 is equal to z2 so p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g is equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g here the pressure head or p1 by rho g is equal to h1 plus h2 by 2 and p2 by rho g pressure at the second section is equal to h1 plus h2 by 2 minus h okay v1 is very negligible okay so v1 can be neglected so the Bernoulli's equation comes to the form h1 plus h2 by 2 plus 0 this is v1 which is equal to h1 plus h2 by 2 minus h plus v2 square by 2g we have not neglected v2 so finally this comes to v2 square by 2g is equal to h and v2 is equal to square root of 2g h okay then area of the orifice is obtained by multiplying the width with the height of the orifice height of the orifice or depth of the orifice is h2 minus h1 so b into h2 minus h1 gives the area of the orifice Discha discharge through the orifice is given by cd into area into velocity which is cd into b into h2 minus h1 into square root of 2 g h so finally we have the equation for discharge now let's see the discharge through a partially submerged orifice okay so partially submerged means the downstream side this is the downstream side and the jet of water is flowing through the downstream side which is only partially submerged that is some portion of the orifice is exposed to the atmosphere okay a partially submerged orifice has two portions upper portion behaves as an orifice discharging free 
while lower portion behaves as a submerged orifice. You can see that from the figure. This is the upper portion which has free discharge. This is the lower portion which has a submerged discharge. So, total discharge Q is the discharge equal to discharge from the free portion and discharge from the submerged portion. So, discharge from the submerged portion we already know that is Q1 is equal to Cd into B into H2 minus H into square root of 2G H. So, talking about the discharge to the free portion, we already have derived the equation for large orifices that is Q2 is equal to 2 by 3 into Cd into B into square root of 2G into H2 raised to 3 by 2 minus H1 raised to 3 by 2. This equation we already derived for the large rectangular orifices. So, total discharge is equal to Q1 plus Q2 that is the submerged portion plus free portion. So, Cd B H2 H into square root of 2gh plus 2 by 3 cdb square root of 2g into h2 raised to 3 by 2 minus h raised to 3 by 2.